Welcome back. We'll be overclocking the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X to 4775 MHz using custom loop water cooling. We'll dig into four overclocking strategies. First, enable precision boost overdrive. Second, push your CPU to the maximum Prime 95 with AVX enabled stable settings. Third, push the CPU to its all core maximum frequency. Lastly, DOS overclocking. Before we get started, let's have a look at the hardware we will use. The AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, the Asus ROG Crosshair 8, Dark Hero, ROG Strix, RTX 2080 Ti, G-Skill, Trident Z Royal DDR4, 3200 Memories, EK Water Cooling, Favorite Open Bench Table. Let's have a look at the AMD CPU technology and the overclocking constraints. A Ryzen 5000 CPU consists of a couple of parts, multiple chiplets. A chiplet is a die with specific functions communicate with each other via the fabric. On Zen 3, a CCD consists of a single CCX. Eight out of the eight cores enabled. The fabric Memory controller and memory frequency operate in synchronous mode, run all frequencies in one-to-one -one ratio. In asynchronous mode, you'll face a performance penalty. Let's jump into the benchmarks and the overclocking. Here's a list of the benchmarks used in this guide. Let's have a look at the performance at stock settings. Our first step is to simply enable precision boost overdrive. We rerun the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to default operation. Let's start with the fun stuff and do some manual overclocking. In addition to increasing the CPU frequency to 4.6 gigahertz, we can also increase the fabric and memory clock frequency to 1.8 gigahertz, as well as increase the memory speed to DDR4-3600 and set some manual timings. This is also our maximum Prime 95 with AVX enabled stable configuration. We rerun the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to default operation. Let's keep pushing. We can further increase the CPU frequency to 4,775 megahertz while maintaining the same fabric fabric, memory controller, and memory frequency overclock. We rerun the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to default operation. DOS OC is short for dynamic OC switching. Dynamic OC switching allows us to dynamically switch between OC mode and PBO. You can now benefit from the very aggressive frequencies offered through PBO as well as manual overclocking. Dynamic OC requires very little additional configuration work. We'll show you how to do it using our all core maximum overclock settings. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the extreme tweaker menu. Set AI overclock tuner to manual. Set memory frequency to DDR4-3600. Set F-clock frequency to 1800 MHz. Enter the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Set core VID to 1.425. Set CCD0 CCX0 ratio to 47.75. Enable dynamic OC switcher. Set current threshold to switch to OC mode to 50 amps. Leave the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Enter the Precision Boost Overdrive submenu and enable Precision Boost Overdrive. Then leave the Precision Boost Overdrive submenu. Enter the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Set DRAM timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. Leave the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Then set the DRAM voltage to 1.4 volt and save and exit the BIOS. Before we get to the performance comparison, I want to have a quick word on the current threshold value. The key thing to keep in mind is that anything above the current threshold will force OC mode. Anything below the current threshold will force PBO mode. One way of identifying the right trigger point is to check the CPU current during a benchmark workload. First, make sure the system is set to default settings with precision boost overdrive enabled. Then go into the operating system and use hardware info and Prime95 without AVX. Gradually increase the amount of Prime95 threads and until you see the operating frequency drop below your desired manual overclock. Check the CPU current in hardware info. This is the value you can use to configure DOS OC. We rerun the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to default operation at our maximum all core manual overclocks. With DOS OC enabled, we're able to squeeze out a little bit more performance. All right, let's wrap this up. Quite an enjoyable product for enthusiasts. On the overclocking side, not much has changed. If you're tuning for an absolute worst case scenario, such as Prime 95 with AVX enabled, then you'll lose a lot of single threaded performance. The biggest thumbs up goes to DOS OC. All right, that's it for this video. Until the next time.